I want to take you to the night of the bank guarantee, Mr Nyberg, and you've examined it in your report, and it's a very important part of this inquiry's body of work. And you make it clear in your report that minds were concentrated on that night by the very short-term risk of at least one bank running out of money the following day and not being able to meet maturing obligations. C can you advise the committee, in your view, what was at stake on that night and what would the consequences have been of doing nothing on that night? And was the risk of all of that happening, those very serious consequences of at least one bank not being able to meet its obligations the following day, with the consequence of that bank and perhaps others not being able to open for business in the normal way? Based on your assessment of what was known at the time, was there a reasonable likelihood of that risk materialising? Uh, the reason why no losses were imposed on senior bondholders was at the insistence of the European Central Bank, both back in November 2010, when Ireland was negotiating uh, a bailout programme with the Troika, uh, and subsequently on the election of the new government, when the current finance minister in the summer of 2011 sought to impose uh, losses on the remaining unguaranteed, unsecured senior bondholders, particularly in Anglo and that was rebuffed by the European Central Bank. Um, and I'm asking if you have any personal opinion on that issue and as to whether you believe, again, that the European Central Bank should, along with everybody else, account for their role in the crisis before this parliamentary inquiry. One of the things was a decisive decision was needed that evening. Now, Owen's right, it didn't just happen over one night, but I suppose when you're putting it into into a drama like that, you've got to try to condense the time frame, and I think we'd, we'd all understand that. But a decisive action was needed to avert an absolute collapse. And I think when you look back at it, okay, you can, you can argue the points over, well, one, would one have had a guarantee as wide as that, and would you have unpicked it? I think one of the things would be interesting to look at, maybe by way of a follow-up, is when you get to the review of the guarantee and the, and the EU's role in that, and the fact that there was no mechanism in Europe to deal with this, and that we were promised, sorry Peter, I'll, I'll conclude now, and the fact that we were promised in 2012 that we had this seismic change in Europe, that we'd look at retrospective recapitalisation and with the ESM and all that. But Ireland actually did take a hit as well for the rest of the European banks too. That, you know, so there's a lot more to okay. be explored than just what was on the film. <laughs>